and welcome to the 12th No Stress to Stress Inc. video. Uh, today I'll be just kind of summing everything up from this 12 episode class and uh, putting it all together in one card. Kind of combining several techniques that we've been learning all along as well as uh, some of the more complicated techniques. But you'll see how they all work together and then hopefully you can try a card that's involved like this. Um, so I'm going to show you, first of all, how I cut everything out. I started out with one sheet of paper, uh, of cardstock. This is just vintage cream. Um, I'm not doing any techniques involving a lot of water this time, so I'm just going to stick to this kind, just the vintage cream. You could use watercolor cardstock for this, though. Either one works. Um, and so I cut down this to a standard size card, so I cut the sheet in half. Then I cut this part in half again, and then this is just a quarter inch smaller overall, so there's an eighth of an inch border around the outside. Um, and then this is five eighths of an inch, a little bit more than a half inch, a little bit less than three quarters of an inch. And I just did that by taking a five eighths inch sheet of piece of paper like this, lining it up along the edges, and then drawing the line with a pencil and then cutting it out with an X-Acto knife and um, metal ruler. And then this is just cut down to a little bit smaller than the frame so that it can fit behind the frame. Uh, the measurements aren't Im exactly important. But, so yeah, so we're going to work on this piece first since it'll be going in the middle. Um, so, we're going to start out with doing some masking on this layer. And I'm using this stamp by Hero Arts called the H5514 Mini Petals. And this is one of their newer stamps, and I just love this little image. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp about three of them using my usual triangle pattern um, in some black memento ink. And usually for this, I turn the stamp over and stamp with the ink pad onto the stamp to ink it up just because I like the control of that better and then I don't get the ink on the wood or any other place that I won't, don't want it. So I'm going to go ahead and press it down here and then I'll just uh, stamp it twice more. I'm going to go ahead and add some color. So I'm first going to go over the areas of my flowers and then I'll mask them, them off and do a darker background over the entire thing. So I'm taking this worn lipstick and I'm just going over the area that I stamped. Um, this is really cool but because we'll be going over it with purples I have Victorian Velvet and uh, Dusty Concord picked out. You really, you don't have to be careful. It's just getting the color of the flower all set and then you can adjust um, the area around it as you go. So, I mean, really the only thing to even think about when doing this is how is the flower looking and is it to your satisfaction? And then just try to keep anything from getting too harsh of a line. See, this is okay, but you don't want to go, you know, right down onto your paper like that. stick on there and I'll set that off to the side. I'm just going to add a little bit of Victorian velvet to the centers of the flowers because I know that'll make it a little bit darker. And then I'm going to adhere my masks over my distressing flowers. And I've just gone ahead and cut these out of type paper, just scrap paper that I had sitting around. Just stamped it with my memento ink and then cut them out. And uh, these will be good after this time because we're not cutting them or doing anything crazy to them. Um, and it's pretty much as long as you don't get them wet or um, otherwise mangle them. <laughs> 
you should be able to use them several times. It's just more how annoyed will you get with having several colors on there. It won't actually affect your project. Okay, um, so I have my masks adhered down. You can see they're not, you know, perfect. They still stick up a little bit. But that's really okay. We're just going to be doing just our sink lightly over them. So it's really not a big deal. And so I'm just I'm going to go over the whole uncovered area with my tattered rose. Right now, just adding some of that base color. And then we're going to use the dusty Concord ink to really make it pop. card colored with the Victorian velvet and now I'll bring out the dusty Concord and um, I mean you have to remember that you're not going to be seeing very much of this edge so don't worry too much about the edges of this piece of cardstock but just try to blend the colors until you're happy with them and know that the darker it gets on the, along the mask, the brighter the flower will look. Okay, so I've added my dusty Concord, and now it's time to take off the masks, and this is always my favorite part. Ooh. See, it's just amazing because it doesn't look like much when you put the masks on, but when you take them off, it really just pops. So I'm going to put these masks aside for using again sometime. And this is the bottom of our card, and I'm super excited about this. So I'm going to set this off to the side um, and work next on the area that we'll be setting this on top of. Uh, now the only only the very outside edge will be showing so we don't need to do much with the bottom part of the card but I just wanted to do something with it so before I start anything I'm just going to add some post-it notes to the back just to keep the card from getting um, muddy on the back it should be fine but you can never be too sure So now that I have that, I can go in with my tumbled glass and broken china and just get the edges looking nice and pretty. And basically, this is because I wanted to do this entire card with just um, cream cardstock. And I think this adds a really cool effect. It's not just blue cardstock, you know, it adds some really amazing depth. broken china and then this one I'll actually have coming from the middle out towards the edge and that's just kind of cool you don't have to worry about what the middle looks like since we're doing since we're covering it up so you can kind of go crazy here until you get exactly what you want it to look like <laughs> I'm just going to do some really simple um, water flicking with my fingers to add that nice texture. Um, I'm looking to get a lot of the flicks towards the outside where they'll actually be shown. Okay, so that should be good there. I'll just set this aside to dry and let it work its magic. And then I can get started on my frame. And for this, I wanted to do some clear resist embossing. Um, so actually, the first thing I'm going to do is adhere this little piece of cardstock to the edge of the frame. And you'll see why in a second. Just so that I have something to hold on to 
that won't mess up the clear embossing powder when I put it on. And I'm going to ink up my frame with this dot stamp from Hero Arts. I'll grab my Versamark and ink up my stamp really, really well. And now I can press my cardstock into my stamp. So I have my dots impressed. That should be good. And I'll grab my clear embossing powder. I'll just sprinkle it on here, making sure to get all of the dots covered. Okay, so I have it all covered with the embossing powder, and now I can just heat it up with my heat gun. Alright, and now that I have that embossed, I can just peel it off this, and it was just nice so I didn't have to worry about holding it along the edges or something like that when it's so narrow. It could flop around a lot or whatever. Uh, so next, what I'm going to do is use my Stormy Sky Faded Jeans and Chipped Sapphire inks um, to go through and um, make this frame a dark blue color. And you have to be a little careful because um, paper will rip if you rub it in the wrong direction with your Distress Ink foams. So you just have to be kind of careful, but just watch the magic happen as the dots appear, and I think it's just really fun. That was Stormy Sky, and now I can go in with some faded jeans. And I'll try to do mostly the edges with that. And now just a touch of Chip Sapphire which is a nice dark blue purple color and I'll go from the inside for this one because I know that the inside is purple of my card so this will reflect better on the purple side. Okay so now that I have my cute little frame done all I need to do is grab a Kleenex and uh, spritz it a little bit with some water and wipe off the excess ink that stuck to the embossing powder. And as you can see, that really helps brighten it up. Quite a bit of ink came off, so that was a really cool thing to do. And next what I'm going to do, um, just going to add a little bit of flicking of water to this because I got a couple specks from when I was doing my card base. And I thought it looks kind of cool, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water. Okay, so I added a little bit of flicking of water here, and that looks really good. Um, so now that my card base has dried, has that really cool water effect, I can just go ahead and adhere my card together. And you don't have to worry about getting this completely straight because all of these edges will be covered up. And then this frame will go on like this. Um, before I add the frame, though, I think I want to put a sentiment here. So let me just figure out what sentiment I want to put on here, and I'll be back in a second with that stamp set. Okay, so I have my stamp set. This is the Thank You For Being My Friend stamp set from Hero Arts. And I just, I love all of these sentiments together. They're just really nice. They're not just really generic. They're, uh... Just any of these would make a great card, and there's so many of them. So, I have this, um, I have the I'm Always Here For You stamp, and it turns out it fits just outside of this frame. So, what I'm going to do is just make kind of a, a strip, a strip of the sentiment going across, and then I'll have it adhered to the frame with, like, brads on either side. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp this right in the middle of this strip, which is just left over from when I was cutting my cardstock apart for this project. Oh, that turned out really well. So 
I have my sentiment stamped and now what I'll do just to tie everything together I think I'll just sponge around the edges with some dusty concord just lightly but just to make sure it's not looking stark against the background okay and I think I want my sentiment to go let's see right Right here looks like it'll be really good. So I'm just going to kind of hold it down there and mark where I want my hole for my brad. Mm, this isn't looking quite even so I'm just going to trim it off. Sponge the edge again. So I have these Hero Arts gems, and instead of making a brad and adhering it down, I'm just going to use these gems because I think they'll fit perfectly on this card. I'll just use my X Acto knife like I usually do and place them. Here. And I love using my X-Acto knife because it really helps me place them exactly where I want them by being able to see where I'm putting them before I press down. And it's really not dangerous. I mean, you're not using it to cut anything. So as long as you're aware that you're handling a blade, you're fine. And now what I'll do, I'm going to adhere one piece of dimensionals over here and then two in the middle because I'm adhering the frame with dimensionals. And then I think all that's left is to do a couple of the same gemstones in the middle of this flower. Since it's the only middle of the flower that's showing, we don't have to do it to the other ones. Which is good because I only have three of these rhinestones left. <laughs> So we can do that, and we can also add some pearls into it to kind of just go with the round theme. So there is our finished card, and after we take off these post-it notes, we have a nice clean backing, and this combined three different techniques in one card with so many layers but it looks just great and if you give this to somebody they won't even know how you did it. So that's really the coolest thing about distressing. So you can combine any of these techniques, choose one, choose three, choose five of them and just combine them all together and see what you come out with and that's really the coolest part. So here's the finished card and here's the close-up. Thank you so much for watching this video and the rest of the No Stress Distress Ink series, and I'll catch you again next time.